All right, everybody, welcome back once again. It is still Groundhog Day, February 2nd, 2018, 9.32 p.m. All right, and I mentioned in my first video about the winter storms that I had a video I was ready to post about two new invests we have in the South Pacific Ocean um, that would be called cyclones in that part of the world. We have cyclones, typhoons, and hurricanes. All of them are the exact same thing. It just depends on where on the planet they uh, take place. So we are dealing with cyclone season right now, uh, which takes place in the Indian Ocean and the South Pacific. Uh, really quick as a recap, if you remember, we made videos about uh, Cyclone Fihi, which actually just hit New Zealand um, a little bit harder than they thought it would, and then we were also speaking about this massive cyclone, uh, Siebel, which is actually out in the middle of nowhere. It's in the middle of the Indian Ocean still right now. It is a little bit weaker than it was um, even a couple hours ago, but still a very significant cyclone. It's a good thing there's no land within its uh, path at the moment. I don't see it causing any damage, but just to give you an idea of uh, the fact that we're in cyclone season, the Indian Ocean and the Southern Pacific Ocean is where that action comes from. So. At the top of the list, they still have Siebel because it is still an active cyclone. But then what we have now are two growing situations that may, um, one way or another, end up affecting New Zealand once again, one of them being pretty significant. Now, in my opinion, one of these is going to kind of fizzle out. Um, it does show uh, these two storms came from the same exact area. And before we get into the satellite imagery, I have a few pictures pulled up just to give you a little bit of a background on where these storms form um, at this time of the year. Now, you can see Siebel is still right here. That red circle with the lines, um, that means full-blown cyclone, tropical cyclone. If we were to see that here, that's a hurricane. Um, but when we're dealing with the Indian Ocean and the Southern Pacific Ocean, these are called cyclones. And because we're in the Southern Hemisphere, these rotate clockwise. If we were above that in the Northern Hemisphere, they rotate counterclockwise. That's why our hurricanes rotate this way. And then when you're south of the hemisphere, they rotate uh, clockwise. So this chart basically shows you um, the hot spots of where cyclones usually form at this time of year. And it just so happens that the area we're looking at is right here where you can see these colors and the yellow um, is very significant and then the greens are also significant and I know it has a percentage down here but we do have two invests going on right now you can see there's one here there's one here now there is a little bit of confusion I'm going to show you one more chart here um, if you can see right in this area is where also we're looking that's where both of these invests are coming from from like the northern west side of Australia it says development of tropical cyclone tropical depression um, TD as in tropical depression or greater strength so that is correct that is from where that is where both of these invests are coming from and then where we see this red color here it says tropical cyclone formation now the reason that this is here is because we have these two invests that are making their way across the Solomon Islands, then over Vinatu, and then they head towards Fiji, and then by the time they wrap around Fiji, one of them becomes a full-blown cyclone. Now, they almost go through something what we call a Fujiwara effect. We spoke about this uh, during the Atlantic hurricane season last year. That's when two hurricanes get within about 800 or 900 miles of each other. They begin to interact, and they spin around each other. Um, it was kind of the concept used in the movie The Perfect Storm, even though the movie was a little bit of an exaggeration. Usually the stronger of the two storms will survive. They don't necessarily merge and create a superstorm, although I do believe it is possible. It's just, it's an unlikely situation. It's been a long time since anything like that's happened, if at all. But anyway, that's not why we're here. Let's carry on. Um, okay, this is what I'm going to show you later, actually. Um, really quick, um, the southern area of Mexico has, um, at this moment, a favorable chance of a tropical storm forming. And this is because of warm water, guys. I was talking in my last video um, 
that the Gulf of Mexico, there are waters there that are 80 plus degrees now. So we are in the month of February and already the Caribbean waters are beginning to warm up. And in another uh, chart I had up, you can see some of that water pouring into the Gulf, which is 80 degrees. And when you have 85 to 80 degree weather, that is prime time for tropical storm development. Now, that doesn't mean that we're going to get tropical storms in the uh, Caribbean or anywhere near the U.S. at this time. We still have a few months to go for that, but it is absolutely possible. There have been hurricanes and tropical storms uh, well before that June 1st date, and there have been tropical storms and hurricanes well after the November 30th date. So it is not out of the realm of possibility. But the fact that we can see this here, that they have marked this as a favorable zone in the south area of Mexico is very interesting to me. And now, for those of you that are interested in what parts of Mexico that is, that is right here. That is Guerrero and uh, Oaxaca, I believe. Um, you know me, my pronunciations, they could be way off, they could be on, but for those of you that live in these areas of Mexico, uh, they do have a high favorability for a possible uh, tropical development in this area. But that is not what this video is here for. Today we are talking about the South Pacific Ocean. Again, these charts, I just wanted to show you really quick before we move on that this is prime time for cyclone formation in these areas. Now, as I move back to... Uh, the websites we're using, uh, we have 96P Invest, which is an investigative area, that's why they call them Invests, and then we have 97P, which is an Invest. Now, there's a little bit of confusion here because 97P Invest is actually farther away than the 96. Now, it all depends on which one forms first. That's where the names come from. We also had that confusion going on during the Atlantic season of why people were asking how come a hurricane closer to Africa was named first before um, one that was closer to, uh, let's say, the... Um, uh, Bahamas or an area like that and it all depends on which one forms first or which one becomes an invest first. Now because uh, 97P invest has a lower pressure that's the one they have higher on the list and currently that one is over the island of Vanatu. You can see the low pressure right here. If I click the satellite image you can actually see how it's beginning to form. You can see those thunderstorms they start to collect and build up and then that hot air rises from the ocean up and it expands and then you get that spin which in this case would be clockwise because we're in the southern hemisphere so here's the satellite image for that first invest now I will go back to this site here that is the 97P here is the projected model for the 97P which is the one that is not expected to survive and the reason for that is because of something called the Fujiwara effect now both of these storms are back to back here is the 97 spaghetti plot the 97P and then here is the one for the 96P so 96P is back here by the Solomon Islands and then 97P is actually right here by Vinatu so you would think that uh, 96 should be here and 97 should be back here but again it's whichever one becomes an invest first now 96 P is the one I'm worried about because it is expected to not only survive but once it passes over Vanatu in 72 hours it's then gonna pass over according to the charts over the Fiji Islands possibly making a small contact with that southern Fiji Island and then it's gonna make sort of a southern to west hook back underneath Fiji and then it makes a south turn right towards New Zealand once again and if you guys remember we just dealt with Cyclone Fiji which um, I feel New Zealand uh, underestimated until it was actually right at the the coast because they declared state of emergency there was flooding storm surge you name it and that all happened fairly quickly that happened about 12 hours before it hit and if you remember we were covering that storm for about three or four days before it even got near New Zealand so um, again we all know this stuff can change these numbers here are the hours out so we're talking 240 hours from now a lot can change in that amount of time but still it's worth bringing to your attention uh, what we're seeing here so once again we have invest 97 P which is right now over the Vinatu Island or forming right to the west of it and then that one is projected 
to move over Vanatu. And then, like I said, it could possibly skim the Fiji Islands. Probably won't do much damage. Maybe wind, rain, nothing that crazy. But then when you see this loop here, that's when it begins to interact with 96P. And you can see that 96P doesn't do that loop. 96P stays above the Fiji Islands. And then it's the 97P that does that loop and then comes out here and kind of fizzles out. So you can see here that the 96P is the one that we're focused on. Now, when you see these deep red colors, that means a drop in pressure. So we're in this area, which is cyclone territory. Now again, we are far out. This may change. A lot may change. That's why I follow these storms, and that's why I let people know in these areas of the world of what to expect, because basically New Zealand, besides a few videos that were online, they had about a 12-hour warning before they even knew this storm was coming. I even had comments with people from New Zealand saying, oh, thank God, maybe we'll get some rain, and then next thing you know, they were in state of emergency, uh, 70, 80 plus mile an hour winds hitting the coast, doing damage in flooding areas. So you can see how quickly these storms can just catch you off guard, and that's why it's good to stay up to date on these models, even though this thing is very far away. And I just do find it funny how 97P is the one here, and this is 96P. So obviously they knew something we didn't. They knew that 96 was going to be the stronger of the two, even though that 97 was the one that was closer to the Vanatu Island. So what else do I have to show you here? Um, actually, yes, let's look at the satellite image of 96, which has more of a definition to it. You can see the storms really blowing up and collecting here, um, which is exactly what we were looking at during the Atlantic hurricane season. So um, that's pretty much the information I have as far as this situation goes, guys. So keep an eye on these spaghetti plots, especially if you are from any of these areas. Uh, New Caledonia, you look like you're out of the picture for this one, at least for now. But uh, what concerns me is how it's passing over the Fiji Islands, and then it wants to make its loop down and into uh, the New Zealand area. Now, I do have something pulled up on Ventu Sky. In fact, let's pull up Ventu Sky really quick and look at this together. All right, sorry about that. It'll take only a second to load. We'll change it to wind speed, and we're already set up in the right area. So here we go. This is the Southern Pacific Ocean here. I'll zoom in a little bit. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the height here. We are 10 meters above the ground. I'm setting the height to 500 meters just so we can get a better view of these storms. Now don't base wind speed off of this because uh, the winds are measured at 500 meters, which is nowhere near where anyone lives. You would want to go back to the 10 meter uh, uh, setting to see what the winds are actually going to be but so we can get an idea of where these storms are going to go we're going to check this out now remember 97p is right here as we speak you can kind of see it spinning here and then here is 96p closer to the Solomon Islands now let's move forward in time check it out here is the third here is the fourth and by the fourth, you can see that this one is already down underneath the Fiji Islands, and then we have that second one coming behind it. Here is the fifth. This one moves a little bit more south, and then you can see how uh, 96 is actually getting those deep red colors a little bit stronger than what 97 is. 97, like I said, almost does like that loop-de-loop -loop and then kind of fizzles out into this area. Here is the sixth. You can clearly see now we are getting more and more definition for this storm that already passed over the Fiji Islands. And then here's the interesting part. It makes that um, it makes a little bit of a turn down towards the southeast, and then by the eighth, it doesn't do much movement. And then the ninth is when you finally see it start hooking south. And now comes in for the area of New Zealand because now we have a path going straight down to them and at this point we could be dealing with a full-blown cyclone. Here is the 10th and there was a big movement there so we were back here and then within one day we are here. This is definitely cyclone um, shape at least, cyclone uh, properties. Here is the 11th, we have a lot of movement going on. And then here is the 12th. So this thing could uh, potentially swing out this way, depending on the wind currents. Um, you can see that some of this wind that comes out from the other side of the southern Pacific, it whips around this way, so that may catch this storm and bring it this way. But at the same time, it may still come south, and it may do some 
uh, damage to areas of New Zealand. So we just need some more data to come through, the, to come through to figure this out. But um, in conclusion, guys, we have two brand new invests that are both coming from an area that they are very common to come from this time of year. Again, we have the first one that is right over uh, Vinatu at the moment, and then we have one that is back further by the Solomon Islands. Both projected to pass over Vinatu, both projected to pass over the Fiji Islands, and then the stronger of the two hooks down and then makes a southern movement towards uh, New Zealand with ju with ju that just finished getting done with Cyclone Fihi. And just as a recap, guys, this is still uh, Cyclone Siebel, which is um, still a significant storm. Uh, 105 knots, I still believe it is. Um, Again, no threat to land. I was wondering if maybe it was going to clip this part of Australia. It does not look like it's going to happen unless something dramatic happens and it follows this wind pattern here. But I really think it's going to get caught up in this thing and then pulled down before it does any damage to here. So I hope you guys can absorb all that. I know that was a lot of information at once, but um, again, these spaghetti plots are very important to follow. Um, they are just basically projecting that 97P is going to do its loop-de-loop -loop and then kind of fizzle out and not really do much. It could very much uh, blow up again, we don't know. But the emphasis right now is on 96P, which could be a full-blown cyclone by the time it gets to the west of the Fiji Islands. Alright guys, that's it. That's it for tonight at least. I will have more updates in the morning. Like I said, I have the weekend free to keep you guys updated. And that's all for now. So people in New Zealand, uh, the Fiji Islands, and Vanatu, and also currently Solomon Islands, which, which may be currently feeling some of this right now, uh, be on alert for this stuff because these cyclones are no joke. And um, that's all I got for you guys. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll talk to you all very soon. Have a great night and Groundhog Day, and happy Super Bowl. Take care. Bye-bye.